Welcome to our Good Friday service. Join us as Lydia leads us in the song Covered.
Have you ever thought about what it would be like to be sitting at the Last Supper with Jesus? To be one of the disciples who had just ministered with Jesus, saw Jesus doing miracles, saw him multiplying food, making blind people see, seeing people who were crippled stand up and walk, seeing him teach on the kingdom of God and bring an understanding of who God was and the relationship that God wants to have with mankind. And then they were sitting here at the Last Supper and Jesus was preparing them for what was about to come, for his sacrifice on the cross. And he uses again an example and uses the bread and wine of Passover to teach them and prepare them and give them an emblem that they could remember him by. I want to look in the book of Matthew chapter 26, starting at verse 26. And I want to lead us through in communion today. It says in verse 26, As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Let's do that together today. And as we do, let's remember again the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. How he was bruised and beaten and whipped and took the punishment that we deserved, but he took it upon himself because he loved the world so much. And then in the next part, verse 27 says, Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Let's take part in the emblem of the drink today. And as we do, let's remember the new covenant that he made with us, the promise that he made with us, and that he is coming back again. And there will be a time and the day where we can eat this meal with him again. We can be with him again as he comes back for his church, comes back for his bride. But let's remember his sacrifice that he made on the cross. We're going to sing the worship song, Love Ran Red. And as we do, just allow our hearts to be reminded again, just as we took these emblems, let us remember his sacrifice that he made until he comes again. There's a place
and forgiveness Where all the love I've ever found Comes like a flood Comes flowing God, we thank you for your love, your compassion for us, Lord, that you would send your son. God, he took on the burden of the cross. He took on the pain, the humiliation, the sacrifice on the cross so that we may live and we might have life and life to the full. Jesus, thank you for your obedience, for showing us the way that truly you are the way, the truth, and the life, and there is no other way to the Father but through you. Jesus, thank you for your grace in the time that we live in now. Lord, in the world around us, in the circumstances we find ourselves in, in this COVID world, Lord God, we pray for your grace and your mercy. May you hear our prayer. May we call out to you. Jesus, you intercede to the Father. You are our great high priest. So Jesus, even now, just the healthcare workers, those, Lord God, who just need a special touch for the outbreak of the pandemic, Lord God, for the increases in the hospitals. Lord Jesus, we just pray in Jesus' name again that you come and you work in power. God, may, may COVID just be arrested in its tracks. And God, may we be able to uh, just serve one another, Lord God, through this time. A time, Lord God, where it seems like there isn't hope. But Jesus, we thank you that today, Good Friday, we can remember the hope that we are not alone, that you came and you gave us the way to the Father. You gave us a way to freedom and life and life everlasting. Jesus, the fear that we might live with, God, I reflect with the disciples, I reflect with you who were in agony as you were calling out in the garden. God, fear is a very real thing that we go through, but yet you are the Prince of Peace and you came and you conquered fear, you conquered death. Jesus, we thank you that you took it all upon yourself. 
We ask, Lord, that if there's anyone who is watching this service, anyone who, who does not have that personal relationship with you, that even now we might call out to you and call you Lord and our Savior. We may humble ourselves and bow our knee, declaring that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and there is no one like you. So Jesus, may this be a good Friday, truly good because of what you have done. Thank you again for your grace and your mercy. Continue to move by your spirit and show us more of who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely will someone die for a just person, though for a good person perhaps someone might even dare to die. But God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we have now been declared righteous by his blood, will we be saved through him from wrath? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, then how much more, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received this reconciliation. You've heard the expression, don't take that personal. You might have heard it in a movie where the villain, you know, uh, either steals from someone or swindles someone out of a large sum of money or, or out of a business transaction or takes some real estate from someone in a sneaky, underhanded way. Oh, it's business, they'll say. Don't take it personal. Or maybe even from a friend uh, who said it as a disclaimer to something that they were going to say, as, almost as an excuse to an insult or, or something they would say against you. Uh, hoping, of course, that there's no repercussions um, on their friendship with you. Um, but of course, they probably meant it. Well, I've decided to name my message, Don't Take It Personal. Today, being Good Friday, the church around the world has been or will be celebrating the death of Jesus, the Son of God. Why is that a celebration? Well, let me just put it in context. Just before the message, we read Romans 5, 6 to 11. Insightful words from the Apostle Paul that he wrote to the church in Rome about Jesus' death. And I want to focus on just one verse, Romans 5, verse 8. It says this, But God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. As we reflect on this verse and others like it, uh, and even those, those verses in the context that Pastor Nathan just read for us, we tend to remember his sacrifice. He died for every person. Past, present, and even future. Everyone. Now, that's a large group to consider. Uh, according to the Population Reference Bureau, that's 108 billion people till, who, were, who have lived as humans till the year 2020. Everyone, everywhere in the past, Jesus died for. Everyone, everywhere who lives today, Jesus died for. Everyone who is yet to be born, as well, the many who have been aborted. All the people from every nation around this globe, even nations that no longer exist, but whose people have been mixed in and with conquering or, or, or occupying nations. The sheer enormity of God's love is overwhelming for our small minds to conceive. Don't ever get lost in, in trying to figure out the big picture, that 108 billion people, um, that, that you forget the death 
of Jesus Christ on that cross is personal. Unlike that popular phrase at the beginning of my message, don't take it personal. God's love for you is very personal. You should take it personal. His love through Jesus is real and personal and individual for each of us. Actually, it's so personal that he knows each of us by name. He actually created us. And he not only knows our name, but he knows how many hair are on our head. And he's definitely familiar with our hopes, our wishes, our desires. He knows where we live and with whom we live. And according to Matthew 6, Jesus said this, and even God even knows what you wear and what you eat. And he has a plan for each of our lives. As different as each of us is different, yet as profound a plan and significant a plan for us as oxygen and water are for sustaining life. His plan is so big for us because he loves us personally. As he hung on the cross that day, I'm convinced that each and every one of our names and even our faces passed through his mind. How? I don't know. But he was God as well as being a man. I, 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 no doubt it was the depth of the darkness of all of our sin that caused him to cry out, as he hung on that cross. In Matthew 27, he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The love of God is so much more than you or I could imagine. God came down in the likeness of his son to, give, to live on earth and to die for your sin. What did you do to deserve that love? Nothing. You know, often as humans... We associate love with something to be earned. We think about love as a reward for performance or a privilege for our pedigree or our family name. Or we ask ourselves, what can I do to measure up to that standard? How do I have to think or act or live for God to love me? Well, the answer is nothing. You, you can't live any particular way for him to love you. He loves you because we are, therefore, God loves us. We can't change that love. His personal and intimate love for each of us. His love was never given on the basis of what we can do for him. It was given freely and without reservation. All we can do is accept his love as a genuine gift. Truth is that Jesus didn't die for us after we confessed our sins. He gave us his life before we had a chance to confess. He died for our sins while we were still sinners, that verse said. He put his own life on the cross for you and for me. Because he died and took our sins to the cross, we live in the hope of the power of the resurrection. But that's for Sunday. We'll wait for Easter. While his sacrifice is personal and his love is unconditional, all we have to do is receive his gift of grace. Earlier, we remembered his death as we shared in communion together. That was an exercise to draw our attention to what he did for us personally. As we ate and drank, we remembered his selfless act of love for us. So here's what his death did for us. When Jesus died on the cross, he took our sin on himself. So in essence, we died too. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. 
says, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Since we are dead to the sin that Jesus took on himself in our place, we become free from the power sin held over us. Romans 6, verses 6 to 7 reads this. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with and that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. So we can live in the practice of the freedom from sin because Jesus died for us. Let me assure you, you still will sin. And that's because we live we still live in this broken world. You may even struggle with sin uh, the way Paul expresses it in Romans 7, uh, verse 24. He says, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? However, because of the real and personal love that God has for us. We are saved from our sin through Jesus. So I'll read verse 24 again, but I'm going to add verse 25, where Paul says this, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus died for our sins so we could be free from sin and its effects on us. That is worth remembering. It is personal. And it was meant to give you and I a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now maybe you're listening to this today and you've never accepted Jesus in your heart to make his sacrifice real for you. Let me encourage you to do just that. And I'm going to read a prayer line by line. I'd like you to say it right after me. So I'll read a line, you read a line. And, and if, if you're in a room with a bunch of people, can everyone in the room just say it together so no one feels uncomfortable? So if you want to accept Jesus and his sacrifice for your sin, pray this with sincerity of heart. Everyone, let's repeat together. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and I want to accept the gift of love you have given me. I know that sin no longer has a hold on me because I died to sin when you died on that cross. Thank you for your gift of love. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer with me, um, get in touch with us via this email address that you see on the screen here. And uh, just let us know that you, you did that. Um, I want to get you... I want to get you a Bible and I'll try to get you connected with a, a, ch a local church. Um, you're always welcome at Glad Tidings or another church nearby you. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us this Good Friday. And I trust we'll see you in two days on Easter.